Hello and welcome to the first real video, apologies for using air quotes within the first five seconds of the video, for this virus isolation build. Now for those of you that watched the first video, thank you for doing that. It's more about me just wanting to build something really. I'm getting itchy not building anything, going out and flying, and I'm sure lots of you who watch this are in exactly the same boat. Social isolation is something we all need to do and we all need to take care of each other and make sure that we don't overload those frontline people who are putting themselves and their families at risk taking care of those who do get poorly from the virus. But I just need to build something. It's that easy. Now in the last video I talked about all the different options that I had and rather than me just go and kind of build something for my own edification I thought you know what while I'm sat here with my hair growing, because uh, it's now starting to get really long, I imagine I'm going to have a ponytail by the end of all this, uh, I thought I'd actually ask you, the viewers of the channel, what you wanted to build. So a massive thank you to everybody that went onto the community tab of the channel and did the voting. Let's have a quick look at the results as I'm recording this video on Friday the 1st of May. So as I scroll down, we can see that it's very clearly everyone wants traditional FPV, which is fine. That works for me. Uh, receiver, well, at the moment, uh, it doesn't really matter. I could kind of take my pick. Um, and then in terms of the flight controller, that's really interesting. This is changing on a daily basis. Uh, the Matek F405 wing is something I've done a lot already on. But there are two things we can be sure about. You want iNav and you want the right wing mini drag. So that is good enough for me to make this next video and to finish the model because the right wing mini drag, as I explained in the first video, was something that I actually bought back in summer 2018. Went and got all the pieces from right wing, uh, quite an expensive model, all the pieces are very expensive and just lost heart with the whole thing. So you know what? That's what I'm going to build. If you're interested in the AR wing, I have loads of other builds, links to everything down below. I have links to how you do Crossfire, links to how you do Free Sky receivers, links to how you do DJI HD systems, links to how you do analog. Again, links below. So if this build is not going to be exactly what you voted for, don't worry about it. And that brings me back to the flight controller choice. The next video is going to be all about the flight controller. At the moment, the F765 is the one that has the majority of votes. It has some additional features over the F405. Specifically, the one that I think lots of people are interested in is the ability to connect two cameras and to switch between them in iNav. And that could be fun to have like a, a camera looking back over the model and a camera looking out the nose. Whichever wins, I am absolutely going to do a video as part of this series, even if the F405, when I get to that bit, is the one that is winning in terms of the vote. I'll still do a video on the F765 with iNav to show everybody how you set all of that up and some tips and tricks. So, without any more ado, we have to go and finish the build. Now, this is what it's going to look like at the end of the video. Uh, an awful lot more together. Gosh, it's a heavy beast. But then... Uh, the motor is the size of a small can of beans filled with magnets and wire. Uh, so let me go through and carry on from that video series that I did back in August, September time, 2018, and finish this build because obviously before we start playing around with electronics, we need somewhere to put them. So before I start breaking out the exacto glue and all that stuff, we need to go through the pieces that we've got to put on the actual airframe. Now, uh, this was the bracket that was supplied with it. It's kind of a bent aluminium, um, and I don't think I'm going to use that because in the kit that I bought with the upgraded motor, we had all these kind of 3D printed motor mounts, which actually I think would do a much better job. Now, I seem to have quite a few of these somehow, but I think one of these will be perfect. The way that the motor slots into this and the spacing and the extra rigidity I'm going to get from this rather than from the aluminium uh, should hopefully make it worthwhile. The weight isn't that different. And to be honest, the motor is so blooming heavy anyway, I don't think that's uh, going to be an issue. So we're going to have to put that on the back. Next thing to have a look at then is the ESC. Now this is the right wing ESC that goes along with the upgraded secret source motor that I have here. This is a beast. I think it's an 80 amper. 
um, but it is covered in heat sinks. Now it's going to go inside the chassis at the back. Um, we have nice bullet connectors for the motor, so uh, that's going to be an easy thing to connect up. But we're going to have to find a place for that. It shouldn't be too tricky. Next thing we're going to have to put in is the motor. This is a 3536-1700 kV motor with a 4mm shaft. It's the kind that has the separate piece that you have to screw on to the actual motor itself. So the top part here is the back of the motor. Um, absolutely huge beast of a motor this. I'm going to have to screw on this front part which will actually hold the prop. That will go onto here, then into the 3D printed mount and then that all has to go in the uh, guides that are already glued into the back of the plane. So the next packet of things is this little bit um, here. Now these are the control rods. Uh, we're going to have to cut these to length as well. They also include some carbon outers. I wouldn't put those onto the end and some 3D printed control horns for the elevons at the back of the wing and a couple of spare connectors for the servos too. Uh, we'll look at the servos in a second. Now I uh, wasn't sure about using these actually but they are pretty robust and they give a huge amount of control over how much deflection you have. In fact I've got lots of other 3D parts in the box here. So we have this which is kind of a hand launcher protector for the bottom. These little pieces go at the bottom of the vertical winglets that go between the wings and the main body just to help protect them. Uh, sadly it's all in uh, blue plastic which is not going to go with my model in any way shape or form. The next thing we have are the servos. Now these are bloody big, heavy, powerful servos, metal geared. And again, these are the ones uh, from right wing for the mini drag. 3D printed controls horns that I'm going to use. Uh, again, big chunky, beefy things. So to install the motor and motor mounts into the back of the model, that's going to be relatively easy. All of the screws and everything are included in the kit. So you're just going to have to make sure that you've got a little bit of room and just start screwing everything together. Uh, make sure, I would suggest putting a little spot of uh, Loctite potentially on these kind of screws just because it's metal into metal and the vibration can back them out. So if you have some of that, I'd put a little dab on. Once those are on, then it's just a case of finding the right length screws and then putting them through the 3D printed support and then that can be screwed into the back of the plane. Again, the screws that come that you need to hold it into a particular position are all supplied in the kit. Now there is the ability to slide the motor backwards and forwards. I'm putting it to uh, in its kind of uh, most forward almost most forward position um, and that way if I need to I can move it a little bit further backwards if I need to balance the center of gravity. Center of gravity is very close to the front of the wings on the mini drag. Next job then is to install the servos into the wing. Now there is a recess in the top of the wing for the servo. Uh, very nice to see that the blend um, hinges that I made a year and a half ago that just sat in the garage are absolutely perfect. The fact that the hinges and the blend is so happy. But I'm going to have to install these uh, servos into position. Now the challenge that I've got is I could either snip or cut off the two little kind of flanges at the side um, or I can kind of cut into the foam and I think personally I'm just going to cut into the foam just to keep the servo it's just an extra anchor point the other thing as well is there's no recess here for the wire to come out into the main body so I definitely would get yourself a very very sharp exacto and start cutting what I did was cut the two guides for the side of the servo and also cut a channel so that the wire could go into the main body of the mini drag. There is space for the servo cable to go through. It will go through the two bays either side of the main kind of battery ESC flight controller bay. But you are going to have to spend a bit of time. Now what I did, I used a servo tester to make sure the servos were okay. Always really important to do that. To center them at 1500 and then try and mechanically line up these 3D printed arms as best I possibly could. So they were at 90 degrees to the servo before installing them. That should make sure that they're hopefully going to be pretty close. 
Once that was done, then you need to run the control rod along to the elevon at the back, parallel to the inside edge of the wing, and you need to then kind of mark out where you want the control horn on the elevon. Uh, I wouldn't put it too far back because you don't want it on the really thin part of the balsa. You don't want it too far forward because you don't want anything underneath catching anything as part of the hinge. Use two of the screws provided. They'll be super long and you can snip them off on the other side. And it's just a case of cutting the control rod to length and kind of making it off. I have used super glue to actually glue the control rod into place after roughening up the end with uh, some nice rough sandpaper to make sure that the super glue gets a really good grip on that rod. Once that's done, the wing looks like this. And then the next job, of course, is to replicate it and do the wing in exactly the other way. Uh, the only other bit of advice is give the elevon a little bit of reflex, have it up slightly. When you have a flat edge down the wing onto the elevon, you want a gap of about one, two millimeters uh, between that. Am I balling this? To be honest, I now have in the flight controller will take care of all the trimming. Uh, so long as I have the central gravity about right, the flight controller will be able to do the rest for me. Last job, of course, then, is I need to also cut a hole to then get the servo into the main body of the model. And I am quite surprised that in a model that costs so much that these kind of little channels aren't molded. But I guess this is part of the fun of having a right wing model like the Drac or the Mini Drac. So I have to cut those as well and then I can pull the cable through and that's all going to be in place. The only other thing I've done, I've printed a couple of parts that are going to hold in the front of the covers for both the battery electronics bay in the middle and the two auxiliary bays out either side of that towards the rear and it is all ready for the next video so now the plane is ready we need to do the flight controller so i'm going to give it a few more days going to have a look at where the voting is and then start setting up the flight controller with the gps and the fpv system in preparation to install into this mini drag Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.